Guru Purnima is a, a day when I get very moved, as some of you already know. Uh, I want to uh, do a different kind of presentation today. So this is about Brahma Yajna and Guru Purnima. And we have this uh, verse in Taitriya. Panchava ete maha yajna satati pratayante satati santishthante deva yajnaha pitra yajnaha bhuta yajnaha manushya yajnaha and brahma yajnaha. So yajna as in a karma, a reverential sacred karma that we do for all our five sets of relationships. And these relations are there for each and every person universally. Our relationship with the devatas. And we owe them a lot. There is a rinam, you know, D-E-B-T, debt is not a great translation. Uh, it is a rinam in the sense that we owe the devatas a lot because they are blessing us every moment our ancestors, Pitras, who we are here because of them, Bhuta Yajnaha, plants and animals, our envi entire environment, definitely the people and the Rishis. And so I thought it would be a very appropriate occasion to talk about Rishi Yajna. So for a lot of us, Rishi connection might be if I know the name of my Gotra, some people don't know and probably don't care. And we don't have any connection with Rishi, we may think. But this entire Vedic culture is actually sustaining the vision of the Vedas. And this is just a glimpse of that. And so the vision that all that is here is Ishwara is possible and we see glimpses of that in the culture because no one will bat an eyelid if you are praying to Aditya the sun or you are praying to Gangaji or you are doing Kanya Puja you know Kumari Puja if you are doing a puja to a little girl invoking the goddess that's perfectly fine and of course you can say namaste to shiva you can say namaste to mahalakshmi and of course you say namaste to a human being and so the beauty the greatness of this vedic culture is that we recognize the sacredness of all forms and this vision of the vedic vision that comes from the vedas it lives because we live the Vedic tradition, we live the Vedic culture and the culture is very deep with a lot of symbolism and meaning. And so I want to talk about three broad areas as to how to do Rishi Yajna. So three things, okay, one is we have to see the Vedic vision, we support Vedic initiatives, we safeguard Vedic culture and we serve in whatever capacity is possible. So we go to the first one, which is where a lot of us are. Okay, so this is where we are. We attend Vedanta classes and we attend retreats, maybe workshops also. And this Vedic vision to be able to see requires a very deep sadhana. So the modern equivalent is 10,000 hours. The traditional equivalent is 12 full-time years, okay? So a sadhana of very deep commitment, investment of your time, effort, blood, sweat, tears, you name it, and immersion. I don't mean to scare the, uh, you know, the new students who've joined, but I'm just indicating that this is not something ordinary that you have signed up for. So a lot of us are involved in this seeing the Vedic vision and out of the many people who get exposed to Vedanta, a very, very few 
commit themselves to embracing the vision and to also teaching the next generation. The others also have a big role to play in Rishi Yagnya because we have to share this vision of sacredness of all forms with our children and grandchildren, nieces, nephews, so on and so forth. And of course, we can teach Dharma essentials. So this Vedic culture is alive because there is that deep symbolism that is alive and every form carries meaning and we can never forget that. The second one is where we support different kinds of Vedic initiatives and therefore this is my squirrel contribution to the grand Brahma Yajna that needs to happen. So I've just picked a few things from that very elaborate overwhelming Shastra map and in that I've just picked up you know this Karmakanda which are the rituals which involve Veda Adhyayana some of the Vedangas as in Sanskrit grammar Vyakaranam and Jyotisham living an Ayurveda based lifestyle Itihasa Ramayana Mahabharata Purana Artha Shastra which is our statecraft Shilpakala Yoga Tantra the classical art forms. Now all this happens to be there in the culture but there is not enough patronage for it and as a part of our Rishi Yajna it is not enough to attend a Vedanta class. You will get the knowledge for yourself but the Rishis were far too generous. They just wanted everything to be shared and everything to be perpetuated and so some of the things we can consider is offering financial support to Veda Patshalas, Gurukulams, Mathas, Ashramas, institutions. Maybe we can fund a course and the course could well be in our name. Maybe we can sponsor development of courses. Maybe we can promote research. We can also support creation of videos. We can uh, write books or put it together, do transcriptions, organize events. Now our attempt to do Vedic Wisdom Festival is one such effort in that direction where we share uh, you know, the Vedic culture and Vedanta talks. Of course, we can also uh, support fellowships and scholarships in different disciplines of knowledge. And while we do all this, it's very important to remember that there are many attacks against the Vedic culture. So not all of us can do everything, but some of us who have the Kshatriya blood in us, okay, uh, or even if we don't have the Kshatriya blood in us, uh, you know, our blood boils when we see the kind of misrepresentation that happens of our Shastra and therefore we really need to safeguard this Vedic culture from different kinds of attacks and threats and that can take three, four forms. So one form could well be intellectual activism, which is really in academic circles where we counter this anti-Hindu bias or we counter uh, some of the scriptural misinterpretations, which is, uh, you know, why I also attend academic conferences because this is very important and required. Then there is also legal activism that can be done wherein we file PILs uh, especially in the context of context of misrepresentation or we highlight the awareness uh, of atrocities that are happening to Hindus alongside other people as well. Of course at a political level we try to ensure that Hindu interests are taken well care of and uh, even now in this time and age it is uh, tragic that our temples are still under government control vis-a-vis uh, -vis other religious institutions. And lastly, um, the media narrative. There are a lot of false narratives about the Indic civilization. This Aryan Dravidian uh, myth has been going on for ages and it has not been sufficiently countered. And so, you know, for us to have pride in our civilization what are we doing to contribute to the narrative is very very important and something that we want to pay attention to 
Um, so these are the three or four things that that uh, broad areas that I have highlighted where we can consider how we can contribute to the rishis because we are here and we enjoy the fruits of this knowledge because of their blessings and because of their generosity, love and wisdom. And we cannot allow this to go to waste. You know, the knowledge should never die with us. It has to be perpetuated. But I don't state this, this as a mandate that if one has sufficient gratitude for this Vedic culture, then one will try to see that whatever one can do, however one can do yatha shakti, you know, as per the capacities I have, I make a contribution. Because in contribution we grow to, we first start giving and in time we give up and we give up all the way uh, in the sense of kartritvam, that I was never a karta or a bhokta and that may I truly be an instrument. Um, so, Pooja Swamiji has created uh, many teachers and everybody is in so service of the culture. Country. But within the so, boundaries of this country, we would like to see that the people help each other. That awareness is to be brought about. And this is the song, the theme song. Bharata Desha Hitaya Bharatadi Mahamati Sevita Bharat Desha Hitaya Bharatadi Magamati Sevita Bharat Desha Hitaya Bharatadi Magamati Sevita Bharat Desha Hitaya Guru Seva so Bharata Desha Hitaya Kuru Sevam Thank you.